we're going to use some of the properties of real numbers that we've discussed to do a little bit of simplifying. So first, let's say that we're simplifying this expression without a calculator. We have some like terms. If we did a little bit of regrouping, we could add 12 and 18 together to get 2x plus 30. So which property did we use when we did that regrouping? Well, that's the associative property. If you look at b, I'd like to multiply those together. Really, I'm multiplying negative 35 times 4 sevenths is what I'll be able to simplify. So I kind of reordered there and regrouped. So reordering was my commutative property and then regrouping was my associative property. I should specify on part A that was the associative property of addition and on part B these are of multiplication. So I can go ahead and multiply my negative 35 times my 4 sevenths and get negative 20 times t. We can use some of our properties to simplify without using a calculator. So if you notice these both have a factor of 13, I could factor that out and rewrite that as 13 times the quantity 15 plus 85. So that's really the distributive property, maybe backwards of what you're used to seeing it written as. And then I could do 15 plus 13 plus 85, sorry, and get 100. And it's easier to multiply 13 times 100. You can go back and forth with that distributive property, writing products as sums and sums as products. So on part A, I'm go, going to go ahead and do this multiplication of negative 1 times my negative 3R and my positive 5S, which will give me 3R minus 5S. And on B, I'm going to use my distributive property to factor out a common factor of 15 and rewrite this in its equivalent form 15 times the quantity 2w plus 1. Let's talk absolute value. So the absolute value of a number is the distance between it and 0. So if you think about the absolute value of say negative 2, the distance from negative 2 to 0 on a number line is 2 units. So it's a distance measure doesn't care about what direction I'm going, so that's equal to 2 units. Similarly, the absolute value of positive 2 is also 2 because positive 2 is the same distance, 2 units, from 0. So if I'm going to simplify the absolute value of negative 4, that's 4 because that number is 4 units away from 0. If you're working on B, absolute value is a grouping symbol. So I would first take my absolute value of 3 sevenths, which is just positive 3 sevenths, and then multiply by my negative 1 to get negative 3 sevenths. Quick note, the distributive property does not apply to absolute value. You cannot multiply a negative value into absolute value. You must simplify inside first. On C, we're going to replace our variable with negative 2, and then working inside that grouping symbol, we'll get negative 10, and then the absolute value of negative 10 is 10. Here we're going to decide if some statements are always true, sometimes true, or never true. So thinking about part A, this says if A is negative, then the absolute value of A equals the opposite of A. So let's pick a number. Say we have a value of a is negative 5, meets our requirement of being negative. Let's do the absolute value of negative a and see if it equals the opposite of that value. So if I plug those in, is the absolute value of negative 5 equal to the opposite of negative 5? Yes, it is. Just because it works in one case doesn't necessarily make it true all the time, though. So let's think this through. As long as a is a negative number, then its absolute value will have the opposite sign because distance is always positive. So this is always true. On b, looks a little bit more complicated. It says if a is greater than b, then the distance between b and a is the same as the absolute value of a minus b. So let's pick some values again. So pick an a value that's greater than your b value. I'm going to go with 3 and 2. And let me plug those in and try it. So if I plug those in, I'm going to have the absolute value of 2 minus 3, seeing if that is equal to the absolute value of 3 mi minus the absolute value of 2. So if I do that, I'll get the absolute value of negative 1 
which is going to be 1, equals 3 minus 2, which is also 1. So it's at least some time is true, because it was true in that case. But again, one case doesn't necessarily prove that this is true for every number. So let's try a different variety of numbers. Let's try some negatives. Let's say a is negative 1 and b is negative 3. Still meets my requirement. If I evaluate this expression with those in 4b and a, I'm going to have absolute value of negative 3 minus negative 1 equal to the absolute value of negative 1 minus absolute value of negative 3. And if I evaluate those, I'm going to end up with, let's see, absolute value of negative 2 equals 1 minus 3. I'm going to end up with 2 equals negative 2, which is not a true statement. So this statement is sometimes true, but not always. Let's look at one more absolute value example. So a woman's blood pressure is 17 points away from the normal value of 130. We want an absolute value equation that represents this situation and the two possible values of her blood pressure. Well, her blood pressure could be 17 units too low or 17 units too high. So if it's too low, it'd be 113. If it's higher than normal, it'd be 147. So those are our two options for her systolic blood pressure if it's 17 units away from 130. Equation-wise, we're talking about the distance between her mystery blood pressure, x, and 130. So that distance is equal to 17 units. So I could write the absolute value equation, x minus 130 equals 17. If you think about how you get the distance between two things, you subtract them. So if I take her blood pressure, x, minus 130, that distance is 17 units, and the absolute value represents the fact that I could go 17 units in the positive direction or 17 units in the negative direction. I could equivalently write it this way.